Hello, today we're going to be talking stencils and shields in culinary airbrush. Most are familiar with the stencils, which are pre-cut designs that are just laid flat against our surface and airbrushed. This is the easiest thing to learn, um, but as we get more and more advanced techniques, we might move into a two-part stencil, where the stencil can be either an open design or act as a shield. And what a shield is, is a piece that's used to protect an existing design from overspray. And they can also be used in more advanced techniques for actually creating the design. But we'll do something special with this later. For now, let's work on the flower. OK, see how close that design edge is to the cut edge? If you just go in there and start spraying away, you're going to get overspray at the top. So instead, angle the airbrush away from that cut edge and start your design. Much less overspray. Now if I just scribble color in, I'm going to have gaps. I'm going to have a lot of product as opposed to working back and forth along the edge of a design. I get the same coverage, but I'm following what the design is already doing. So if there's gaps, they make sense. They're not a mistake. Here again, I'm spraying right along the edge of each shape. Or I can spray right along the cut line. I can dust just the bottom edge of a shape. Here's a close-up of the overspray line. And the close-up and the plate splatters that are built up of the scribble and the gaps that you see, as opposed to the nice even coverage and the follow along the edge coverage and the little bit of accenting that's been done. So a lot more creative control this way. Found objects are one of the more fun things that we get to use and incorporate into our designs in cakes. And the most common thing we think of is fabrics and laces that can be wrapped around and clamped behind the tier of a cake, used for just specific elements and pieces and parts, or matched up to cover the entire tier. From there, the sky's the limit as far as designs that are available, like your Halloween and your seasonal. You just have to be mindful that you're spraying in the reverse of what the design is, but we'll be going over that in just a minute. The really exciting thing is, is you could take a fabric that looks very opaque, very tight woven, like uh, an element from a wedding gown where you have to incorporate the design into the cake, and you'd be surprised what kind of results you can have with a piece like this airbrushing directly onto the cake. So we'll take a look at that in just a tiny bit. Some of the stranger items would be the bag that the onions came in from the grocery store which makes really nice fisherman's netting, um, fishnets for the bachelor party cake, dragon scales for the birthday cakes, uh, snake skin, a simple piece of paper, mountains, or rip it, and you have close together and offset a little bit, lightning bolts, spread it apart, and you've got zebra and tiger stripes. When you're done, just throw it away. And then don't forget, anywhere and everywhere you look, you're going to find something that you can airbrush through that will give you an interesting effect, like a comb. So as long as you can wash it, the possibilities are pretty endless. And here's that piece of torn paper. And I'm going to airbrush straight across the top in a straight line. So I'm going to catch the bottom edge, and you can see how you can start making mountains. And the same torn piece right down the center. I'll flop that into place. We start at the top. It's kind of close together and widening out towards the bottom. You can see how you're starting to make nooks and crags and lightning and zebra stripes. And then again, our little comb. And here I'm just spraying over top. And it's kind of hard to see, but there's a nice little line pattern there that would be good for 
well, robots come to mind. Back to the fabric. One of my favorite cobweb pieces. Now, if you notice, I'm starting in that center and I'm going in a circle. I'm not scribbling over the design. I'm following the pattern of the design. Again, if there's a gap, it's going to make sense that way. It's part of the design instead of it being uh, jumping out as an error. You see we've got the, the inverse of the design. So every once in a while, it may be appropriate to airbrush a dark base and then come over top and airbrush through your lace with a nice silver pearl so you can get the contrasting design back again. So this is where you need to just experiment, see what that lace will do for you and make it your own. The nice thing about those two patterns is you can tile them together seamlessly. They, they're just a random repeat, so they're very user-friendly. Now here's our piece of wedding lace. And if you notice, I'm playing with my air pressure there. I'm lowering my pressure with my GMAC because I don't want this lace to flutter all over the place. And you can tell when I've got it right because I'll start smiling. There we go. Got it. Now this is slow and delicate work because I'm airbrushing right on top of the actual embroidered pattern and letting the overspray work for me. So the overspray is going on either side and I'm following the flowers, I'm following the vine work and the leaves. Again, I'm using a low pressure because I don't want this thing fluttering all over the place. I want a nice, tight, crisp pattern from that embroidery. And the color can be whatever colors are used in the wedding party. You can really see that embroidery pattern 